This video is all about how to use this USB relay under Linux Mint. I'm sure these procedures work on other versions of Linux, but this was tested on Linux Mint. As you may notice, there are two USB relay devices here. That's because I use two different computers with a KVM switch to connect my screen and mouse to both computers. It doesn't get any simpler than this. You simply type on, put in your password to turn on the relay. You simply type off to turn it off. So how does this all work? That's the question. Do not, I repeat, do not take this route. This will not get you what you want. It looks promising, but you waste a lot of time and nothing works. By simply opening a terminal and typing dot forward slash on, it executes this file right here, which gives the commands, which turns on the USB. I will explain how to create this file and make it usable in just a moment. To turn off the relay, you simply type dot forward slash off, OFF, -F, and that executes the file shown here, which has the parameters required to turn the relay off. I am sick of Windows, but I know nothing about Linux. So this was the last thing keeping me from switching to Linux, getting this relay to work. So after many hours of research, I found this command LSUSB as shown here. And that lists all the installed devices. That means there's a driver currently existing in the kernel for this device if yours shows up here. And mine shows up right here. I eventually discovered that the command lsmod lists all the modules, which are drivers, installed within the kernel. Here I highlighted the driver, and now I'm going to highlight the item above it in case the driver gets blurred when it's highlighted on your screen. Notice that this Linux Mint version 2.2 already has the latest driver installed in the kernel. And that's what we're looking at here, CH341. Your kernel also likely has this driver present. If your Linux distribution doesn't have this driver, then you're going to have to find this CH340 or 341 driver on your own and install it in your kernel. I can't help you with that. I think most modern distributions already have it present. I wanted to use a simple approach to operating this freeway. I don't care about security violations of a relay on my USB port. So I made the permissions for everybody to execute. Some people might say that's not right. Well, guess what? I don't care because somebody turns this relay on and off, it's not the end of the world for me. They're not hacking any computer on the other end of that serial port. So my permissions are loose. They're all 777. As you can see, I use Nano as my file editor. In case you don't understand Nano, you type, at the terminal, you type Nano space file name, and that opens this thing up. And then you type in these three lines here, this line right here, and then this line, and this line. That will turn on the relay. Now, everybody recommends you use a .sh as the extent for this file name. I didn't do it, it's just more to type when I want to use it, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use on with no extension for this script file name. So once you're finished, you do your control O to write out the file, give it the file name, whatever you decided on. It already knows it, just let it write it. And then once that's done, then you have to go in and you have to change the permissions of that file. Now you open up a terminal, you type in sudo change mod 777 space file name. So it's just like this item shown right here, except you replace the dev part with the file name. And that makes the file permissions work for anybody, any user. Now the experts will tell you, oh, this, this script file has to be saved in a special script file location so that everybody can find it. I don't care about everybody. I'm the only user on this system. So I'm going to put it under my, my personal user folder. So that's where mine lives. And that's where I saved it. So it's up to you if you want to find that special place, put it there or not. I don't really care. I'm trying to keep things simple here. The main advantage to me of setting the file permissions to 777 is that when I do the off command, I don't have to put in my password again because there's no sudo involved. It's just the echo command by itself. As you may have guessed by now, the, the off command is a rinse and repeat of the on command. Just simply open up nano, save this file as, with the name off, type in this line, the single line in this echo line here, 
and then save it and then change the permissions to 777s for that file. And now you've completed everything you need to do. So now you should be able to use these simple commands to turn your relay on and off. If anyone knows how to do an icon setup so that you use click on an icon to do it, I'd, I'd like to hear about that. I know there's a way, I just haven't researched that deep enough yet. For those that may be curious, these two relays are tied together in parallel and they both feed this black wire which goes up to a, a $10 ethernet switch. This turns the power on and off on the ethernet switch. And the reason the ethernet switch is I have a separate modem, separate router, I should say. I have a separate router from my telco router, which simply runs these computers. These computers have no Wi-Fi modules. They've been removed. So this totally isolates these computers from all the iPhones in the house. So when I'm not using this router, I want to turn it off. No sense of allowing access by hackers when I'm not even using it. Also, this router has SSH secure keys and password for use of the keys, so it's pretty difficult for someone to break into this router. It's not a simple password hack. And that's why I have these relays, so I can turn it off when either one of the computers is not running.